else. However, let's say it rained gold for one day. People would empty all their drawers, fill it with gold, the attic and everything. But if it kept raining gold for months, they'd sweep it out, throw their rings away. Scarcity. They get saved the gold because it has a value now. But it only has a value as long as it's scarce. But if we find a whole mountain of gold, it loses its value. So scarcity is one of the main operating characteristics that produces, to a large extent, murder for gold. Whenever you got the history of a diamond, you got all kinds of horrors behind it. So in the future, people will be ashamed to wear things like that. Roxanne's father was a jeweler, always tried to give her things to wear. She doesn't want any of that shit. You know. But there are people who feel that this diamond is worth a hundred thousand dollars, you know. They're, they would never achieve peace because there's always somebody's got a bigger diamond than they have. So if you put up the largest building in the world, there's another guy that'll beat your building by two hundred feet. And you say, God damn it, I'm gonna put up another building. The sickness that we have, there's no end to it the richest man in the world. I would be ashamed if I were the richest man in the world, because I know that the public made me the richest man in the world. I want to build schools and hospitals with the money. I would see no other use for it but to give back to society what I've taken. Now, okay. We feel that within a monetary system, the system cannot be just or equitable, that there will always be haves and have-nots, that um, and within a resource-based economy, it would it would eliminate that. The the problems that we have today will continue to go on. There'll always be busts and booms and markets going up and down and people manipulating for their own advantage. And um, this will never go away within a monetary system because there there will always be people with advantage. And within a resource-based economy, what we want to do is to eliminate the causes of the problems, eliminate the processes that, that produce greed and bigotry and prejudice and um, people taking advantage of one another and elitism and really eliminating the need for prisons and um, welfare. When you make things available to people, you don't have the problems that you have today. We have always had these problems because we have always lived within scarcity and barter and monetary systems that produce scarcity. So we're talking about a resource-based economy which makes things available to everyone. So I look at the system differently. I see a tough job ahead, it's not easy. And I see a lot of assassination and a lot of imprisonment, imprisonment and cops beating people that are good and the cops not knowing any better. Because they've joined the police force, they believe they're holding law and order. In their heads, they're doing the right thing. Whenever you're in trouble, you call a policeman. So all of these built-in systems are going to have to be surpassed. The only thing I can see that's really negative of this system that we talk about, a resource-based economy, is getting from here to there. We have a, a, a lot of things we have to do to take care of the detrimental things that we, we did in this society. We have to clean up the environment, the oceans, the air, and, and clean up the detrimental values that people have from this society of greed and embezzlement and, and me for myself and not caring about anyone else. So um, the hardest thing will be, that's what, that's what the problems will be for sociologists and people who care about other people to change values and to start afresh from children to, to care for others and take care of the earth. That's what our education will be like. There's no way of you, in a given culture, saying, I'm not going to remain a gypsy, that's ridiculous, to wear these earrings and headbands. And if you walk over to Seminole Indians and you say, dancing around the fire, la 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 la, Iroquois, any other, that's ridiculous. The Indians, that's a hell of a good point, la la la, that doesn't mean anything. You can't do that. 
It's no more possible to take a group of cannibals, headhunters, and say what you're doing is ridiculous, and the chief saying, you know, that's a great and in-depth concept. He doesn't have that associative system. And people think of just as a Christian, I can get there and tell them about the sacrifice of Christ. Well, you can take Polynesians that have food and all that and are eating. They'll go to anything and listen to anything, and you can condition them to worship Jesus or anybody or Allah. Yeah. But you go to a scarcity country where people are not eating and try to give them Christ without food. The church, if it doesn't provide food, has no attendance. So the early churches provide dinners and food for starving people. So some of them went to church, you know. You gotta have gimmicks, it's a fish hook. You know what I mean? Bait. And that's what commercials are. Fine print is an attempt at deception. So I know of no other way except preventing information, real. And if our system is not sophisticated enough, or we don't have enough time left before we come to the point of no return, you know what that means? We've damaged the oceans and the environment to such an extent that we don't have the means and the organizations to do away with that. And that means a miserable death for most people, the end of our civilization. So that's why Roxanne and I, we have no power. Say, when are you and Roxanne going to build this new world? I get called, I come with my suitcase, be happy to live in it. We don't need that. We need your participation and support to make it happen. So you have an avenue which may work, and there's nothing else out there.